This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon and welcome to the Clear Lines training session. I am your host, Kip Cohen. It is Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2019. And I am here for the next uh, about 60 minutes to discuss the Clear Lines indicator running on the MedVed Trader platform. If you have any specific questions for me, please feel free to send those through the chat box. Hey, Pat, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, the Clear Lines indicator runs on the MedVed Trader platform. Just to give you a, a quick background on myself and uh, how I kind of got to where I am today. Um, I had been with uh, WiseTrade for nearly 17 years, and WiseTrade uh, had a uh, red and green line indicator that measured buying and selling momentum. And when, oh, please make sure you keep your uh, microphones muted. By the way, when uh, uh, Wise Trade uh, went out of business or shut their doors last year, I uh, developed a indicator to be a replacement for Wise Trade, basically. Uh, because of the shortness of time that I had, I had to develop it with uh, in another platform rather than build a standalone application that would have taken probably a close to a year and an amazing amount of resources. So very, very fortunately, I, I was introduced to uh, the guys at MedVed Trader. They were a uh, partner with Ally Invest, and um, who I used to work for. Ally owned Wise Trade, and uh, so we were able to write the Clear Lines indicator to run on the Medved Trader platform, and so the um, indicator measures buying and selling momentum or buying and selling pressure based on price, volume, tick data. And uh, one of the things that I did that I added to the indicator is a green and uh, red up and down arrow, which uh, basically is just a uh, indication of a, a cross, a validation of a cross. Hey, Sean, thanks. Good to have you here. And um, so one of the, the great things that we have found um, that has made my indicator more powerful is the ability to add um, other technicals with it. You couldn't do that before with WiseTrade. You couldn't you couldn't use other technical indicators with it. So with um, with the Medved platform, we have a whole. Uh, I mean, you can. You can add a number of different indicators on. We've found certain ones that we really like with it, to utilize with it. Um, you can keep it as simple as you want, or you can add as many as you want. So one of the big differences is that the, the platform that we use has two different types of charts, a historical chart and a uh, intraday chart. The historical chart is a uh, basically monthly or long-term trend, weekly, or mid-term trend, and a daily or short-term trend, if you're comparing it to the old wise trade. And um, so when you're just looking, wanting to look at a quick glance at, at what the trend is, you, you have a specific stock. You can you know quickly click on the stock symbol in the watch list. 
it loads it up, and then you can quickly switch between the monthly, the weekly, and the daily, and and see what the trend is of that stock. And then uh, the other type of chart is what's called an intraday chart, and it's any number of minute time frames from some of the preset one, three, five, 10, 15, 30, and 60 to as many as you can figure out up to, I don't know what the max number is, but um, you can create custom time frames. You can go down to fractions of a minute. We, we've been using a 30 second time frame in the morning. So the, the utilizing the Medved platform makes it for a uh, um, system that is a lot more powerful than what we had before with just the WiseTrade platform. There are some more complexities to it, obviously, because it's a different type of application. It's, it's a um, modular application. In other words, the windows move around, can be adjusted. You can add and uh, remove components. And um, there is a lot to the platform. I mean, it is a, it, it is very robust. Um, what I do with my customers, my new customers, is I, uh, when you sign up, if you want, I will provide an, an hour of my time. I'll remote log into your computer with you on the phone, and we'll discuss and build a custom or a couple of custom layouts based on your specific needs. And I'll give you a review of the of the software as well. Uh, I have lots of training videos. And a matter of fact, this session is being recorded. They they do get posted to um, the YouTube page at equity-alerts.com, which is my other company. I have two different companies, Clear Trading Systems, which has the clear lines, and I have equity-alerts.com, which I partner with uh, Lindsay and Jim. But all of our uh, videos are posted here each day. And... Um, you can always go back and watch any of those training videos. There's always a little brief description of what was covered in the in the segment. So that, that's kind of a, a kind of a higher level overview of things. Um, I do see I have a couple of questions, so I'm going to go ahead and um, go get to them. Pat, are you able to hear me now? Pat, can you hear me? Pat G. Um, I just he said he couldn't hear, so I want to make sure he can hear me now. Um, so Frank says, I, I I am afraid to buy and sell through the platform. Still keep TD Ameritrade open on the other computer. I have 10 different accounts that I trade. How do I know which account I'm in at any time? So you'll you'll know by the drop down menu under trading okay that will tell you which account you're logged into you you click the drop down and you'll see which specific account now what'll happen is in your settings you can default one account okay So if you go to settings and you go to accounts, you can pick which one, right? like right here, that's the default, set as default. You can pick one account as your default. So every time you open, that's what's gonna default. Okay. Um, so that way you'll always know which account you're, you're, you're going into. Again, so if you go to settings, so click on the dashboard, go to settings, and then go down to trading accounts. Okay.
All right. Uh, so you, whichever account you want to default, select it, highlight it, and then click set as default. So what will happen is when you start up, you'll know you'll be in that specific account. The, well, the default will be the one that when you get into, but you'll have to click trading and click the drop down to know specifically which account you're in if you switch between them. But it should always default to the one that you have set. Well, okay. And that's for, let me back up. When you set that, whoops, that lay, that, account you need to make sure you save the layout because i believe your layout will dictate which account it opens up to okay so so in other words if let's say this is the account you want to default for and, and you've set it to the default then make sure you go file and then save that layout so that when you reload that layout or when you open that layout, then that is the account that will always open up and you'll, you'll see it. You can color code them as well. I believe you can color code them or they automatic, they may be automatically color coded. I think that's automatic. Yeah. I think the color coding is, is automatic. Um, cause they're all different colors. So, um, I click trading and I get mail, new order actions and something. Click trading, click trading, trading, accounts, accounts, trading and accounts. From a chart, when you click trading, from a chart, remember, when you click trading, if you have, you may make sure you have chart trading enabled, then you should have a drop down and you should see all of your accounts in the drop down. You don't see that. So you're on your your one of your charts and you click trading. Do you have chart trading enabled? You should have a drop down. Frank, if you want after the broadcast, I'll get with you. and and uh, try to figure out what's going on. I'll have to remote into your computer. Okay, anyway, so, but that's, that's, that is how you um, figure out which account you're in. It's just by clicking the drop down, and then going through, you, you should see your different accounts if, if you're logged in. Um, so I don't know what's going on on your end, but that, that's how you tell the difference. And, you know, because you trade so many accounts, it's probably a good idea to keep your, your 
broker account window open just to double check to be safe. Uh, okay, so I had a question from Tom, I believe. Can you review FIB values of TVIX? Sure. So let's put TVIX in. TVIX is the um, tracking stock for the VIX. It's a two, two X, so it's uh, double leveraged. And so are you wanting to see, well, first of all, let, let's, let's look at the, the trend. Okay. Obviously the long term is flat. Hold on, one. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> He heard something outside. That's CJ. Um, I forgot to put him in his crate before the broadcast. So long-term trend of um, TVIX, obviously because of uh, the, it's been split many times and it's hard to read. So let's go to the weekly. Okay, so here's the weekly. So actually, you can see a little clearer picture and I'm going to blow this up so you can see even more. We can go back further. Uh, 50 bars is probably ideal, but um, the, the trend is still currently pointing down. Okay. The trend is still currently pointing down and we know why, you know, the market's near highs. There's no fear keeps going up. So the VIX is low. The VIX is very low. And same on the daily, you know, we're just seeing this gradual slide lower. Now, as far as intraday, okay, let's look at the first 15 minute. And let me put my candlesticks up. And this is one of the other great things that I can do with uh, with clear lines is I can either show candles or not show candles. I, I like to see it because clear lines are, are not a price chart. It's buying and selling momentum. And um, so price is not always on the line. All right. So I select my Fibonacci. I measure the bottom of the candle to the top of the candle. And then I'm going to go down to a lower time frame, so I can see a little bit better. Whew. Talk about some chop. So today, let me go to 100. Today, the TVIX has been very range bound, pretty much stuck between the 127 and the 618. You see how? We kind of bumped up the 618 twice today, but we keep bouncing off this 127. Uh, um, yeah, um, so it's definitely very range bound today. I, I'm a little surprised that with the market, I know earlier it had pulled back a bit, hadn't really moved much, but that this, remember, this is a function of fear in the market, okay? So even though the Dow moves up and down 50 or 100 points, which it's moved around a lot today, there, if there's no fear in the market, TIVX is going to stay low. The VIX is going to stay low. And that's what's happening. The VIX and TIVX have gone down and stayed down because there's a lack of fear in the market. Um, you, you know, you, you have to realize that this is, this is a hedge. Basically, this is something you, you would use to hedge against 
a potential market turn. Hedges, you don't ever want to take large positions in. You don't ever want to over leverage yourself. And you need to know your limitations. You need to know what's, you know, what's the most you're willing to lose. I, I have a, a hedge in one of my accounts, but I have very, it's a limited hedge. So, um, it's a, um, you know, I don't have a lot at risk in other words. So you just, you, you have to know, you have to know your limitations um, and realize that th this is a function of fear in the market. And there's no fear right now, obviously. Joe says uh, to add on, uh, longer term charts are not helpful for Tivix since it's an ETF that can go up $2 in the morning and drop $2 in the afternoon for a full round trip, not for newbies. Yeah, th this is definitely not for the faint at heart. It's not for a newbie trader. And and again, it is really nothing more than a, a hedge. It's it's something good for a hedge. And you, you have to know your limitations when you're hedging your account. Just like if you were buying options to hedge a position. If you were long a position and you wanted to buy options to hedge that position, or you're selling, selling uh, covered calls or buying puts against the position, that's a hedge. And you have to know the limitations. So I, I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I don't tell people. You know, you. I, I don't give buy, sell, or hold recommendations. I don't tell people what to, how to trade their accounts. I don't tell people what size positions to take. I, I show how I trade and how we trade, and and I find good trades intraday. But um, you know, when it comes to to taking a position like this, you, you definitely have to know. That uh, I mean, it it can it can definitely go down, and they can split it too, reverse split it when it gets too low. So just just keep that in mind um, and realize that it's it's a good hedge, but you got to know your limitations. Definitely. Um, so. This morning we had a, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I just want to share with you guys what, what I think is one of the greatest parts of using the MedVed Trader platform is uh, the ability to um trade on the charts whoops and and the ability to to use uh, other technicals with the clear lines to help find targets and and um, you know help determine where stops should go so I'm gonna change my layout real quick I'm gonna go to my uh, popper dropper layout and um, I'm going to point out um, JB Hunt. That was uh, one of my favorites this morning. Oh, wow. I, I'm going to give you another great example here in just a minute. I did. Um, so JB Hunt earlier in the day, Uh, this morning and let me blow up this chart this is the one minute so you can see on the one minute um, it had peaked out and had just started to come down okay so I placed a uh, short and that was right here 102.11 and actually set a, uh, I think I was using the three minute at the time, hold on. Set a, uh, a limit.
and this thing rolled over and accelerated and got out at 10101 that was that was probably the 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 trade of the day i think at the time actually we were looking at a 30 second time frame actually is what we were looking at yeah so this was the 32nd and um so at the time there was uh support down under it and then there was the vwap above it and I, for whatever reason i decided to put my my limit kind of in between the two let me let me look at something real quick i just want to look back at that Oops. Yeah. So it was kind of in between, in between uh, these two uh, daily pivots, S3 and S4. And I think I don't have the 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 other chart i wanted to look at but um and i was looking that it had come way down before earlier in the morning so i was kind of trying to pick a point but i've set a limit kind of in between and it and it sure enough went dead in the actually it went all the way down to s4 if i would have been a little more patient it happened so fast i didn't even get the opportunity so i was using the chart trading feature with uh, the bracket order, and it and it came down so quick that this shot down so fast that I couldn't even move move down my limit further. I could have gotten more out of it. And actually, yeah, you can see right here it bounced literally right off a of support level four, and then uh, came back up and actually uh, ended up breaking that level. But um, so the question actually was. From Bruce, who says, you were trying out fit pivots and DMARC pivots. Have you found value in them, and will you keep using them? I, I, I have found some value in it, and I am going to continue using it. Um, you can actually see it here on the three-minute. So now I, I didn't catch this move, this later short, but you'll notice right here there was another short uh, a little after 10 o'clock. And you had a, a confluence of the VWAP and the DMARC pivot right here. Now, obviously, it actually it went well through it, but that could have been your first target. And then as it got to it, you could have moved your target down. Ultimately, you know, it went much further. It went, you know, quite a bit lower. I don't see any other levels on this chart, you know, unless there are some Fibonacci levels that I'm that I'm missing, and maybe I need to draw the first 15 to see that. Um, hold on. So, I, yeah, here you go. This is this will. Oops, let me go back. We go now down to three minute. So again, th this is the stuff that we do every day. You know, here's the reversal. Look at this right at the hundred of the first 15 minutes. So the first 15 minute top comes down all the way to the zero, actually goes a little below it, goes all the way back to the hundred, jogs around it, and then rolls over. You got two down arrows. So sold off from the hundred, went through the Fibonacci pivot down to the 618, bounces up to the 786, and then through that VWAP and uh, the DMARC pivot, and then ultimately down below the 236, and then it kind of skated across that 236 and has bounced up. Pretty clear stuff there. Definitely, Bruce, I'm gonna continue to use it because I think there's value in it. I. I 
you know, is is it better than than daily pivots? I, I don't know yet. It, is using the difference between um, uh, all session and and just regular session? Is there a difference? I, I I can't tell yet, but I do see on certain stocks the value of it. I do see that it does hit some of those levels and and make the picture a little clear. So. Yes, to answer your question, I, I am going to continue to utilize those indicators. I do like them, and uh, you know, until I can prove otherwise, it, it's going to stay in my wheelhouse for now. The problem is, I don't want to get too much on my chart because then it becomes kind of a mishmash, and you can. You know, you do have to stick to just a few indicators because you start throwing too many in, and then you will get some false signals. You know, you'll think something is about to turn at one and it doesn't. So I, you know, I, I'll say I'm still in the the testing and determination phase if I'm going to continue to use both of those, the D mark and the fib. I, I may only end up with one, and I or may end up with both, or I may not end up with any. I may just go back to using my daily pivots. For, you know, over the years I found that Fibonacci retracement. Um, obviously my clear lines with Fibonacci and daily pivots have, have consistently worked well and I don't like swaying too far off of that. You know, we, we added the, the volume weighted average price because we like what it does. We like how um, it gives us good targets. And uh, here's what I was going to point out. Look. So earlier this afternoon, JBHT ran up and look where it went. It went right to the 50% FIB level of the first 15 minute and VWAP, and then it reversed. So for your short, this was the spot. Look at that right there. You got the, the down arrow on the one minute. You got the three minute arrow. Let's see, what time was that at? That was 13.43, 13.43, and then you got it at 13.45 on the three minute. And that's a dollar plus move down. Close to a dollar. I mean, you just got to follow the you know, follow the trail, find the, the stocks that follow the best, that follow the, your, your indicators and trade those over and over. Because there are certain stocks that you'll realize that like to follow FIB levels and like to follow daily pivots and, and like to follow other, you know, indicators. You just have to put the right blend together and, and, and uh, make sure, sorry guys. <laughs> All right, Bruce, you're, you're welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good question. Sorry guys. Could be the phone. <laughs> Any other questions at the moment? I have a good crowd today. A bunch of y'all here. Any specific qu uh, additional questions before I ramble on on something else? All right, so let's let's just do a let's let's see if we can find something that might be moving right now and might give us an opportunity and let's kind of just go through the process of you know evaluating a stock or, or if you have a, something you're watching let me know 
and we'll Sean would like me to analyze Microsoft. There we go. All right. Wow, Microsoft just sold off. Something just happened. I just noticed the S and P just dumped also, just in the last ten minutes. So, depending on what time frame you're on, if you're on an intraday chart, you can right click from the chart to go view a historical. I, I always like to view the overall trend first, just to know what I'm. You know, I do that in the morning when I'm looking at my poppers and droppers, just to know what I'm up against. D you know, it also depends on what type of trader you are. Um, you know, if you're a swing trader or a position trader, these lights are going to be, these trends are going to be really important to you. So the monthly trend, obviously, on Microsoft has been solid. I mean, this has been, what a beautiful uptrend on the month. The weekly chart nice cycles and patterns uh, in an uptrend. So the negative for me is, you know, this has been uh, almost straight up since January. You've got a little weakness in the current time frame. The red and green lines are coming together. The trend might be coming to an end or at least a pullback for a week or two. And then the daily chart has been in a big uptrend as well. So if you're already in Microsoft and you've been in Microsoft for days, weeks, or months, you're in a great position. Great trend across the board. Great trends across the board. Long, mid, and short. If you are thinking about getting into Microsoft now or in the next few days for a shorter term swing to position trade, I would be looking at this as a little overextension, a little tired, and needs to see a pullback. I would want to see the daily chart come down, like right here. See where it came down for a few days and then cycled up. Consolidate, cycle up, consolidate. Well, we're just beginning to consolidate. So I need to see this completion of the consolidation before initiating another uh, uh, position to the uptrend. Um, it does not look like an opportunity for a short, unless you're looking at it on an active intraday basis. And even that is too late because um, it's already had its drop. It's already come down off the top. So at this point in the day, uh, unless you're looking for a bounce off the bottom, that that's really the only. You now, with 15 minutes to go in the day, would I be actually looking to initiate any kind of trade? For me, no. I don't like trying to trade right at the the last 15 minutes. There's just, to me, you're, you know, you've got limited window. You got to be spot on. If you've been trading all day, you're probably mentally exhausted maybe even physically exhausted depending now that is a nice little bounce and that you know we we did get an up arrow on the one minute at um three three thirty seven eastern and the three minute followed a couple minutes later uh, later Um, so this, this actually, if we, had we caught it a little bit sooner, this would have been a good little active long off the bottom. But at this point, yeah, you're a little late, late in the day to try to do anything. But like I said, if you're already in Microsoft, it's, it looks good. And if you're thinking on a, as an active, you're a little late. What other stocks can I help you guys with? What else can I help you with? Is there something else you'd like me to evaluate?
how do you draw the 15 minute fib? Okay, so we'll do that with Microsoft. Um, from any chart, I can go to a 15 minute time frame. And well, okay, my, yeah, Microsoft's okay. Let me expand the view. So I select a Fibonacci retracement. Okay. Then, which I've selected. Then, so depending on which way it's going, if, if it's going above or below the first 15 minute, I start at the bottom of the candle if it's going down. So in other words, the, the, the price action is going lower. So I start at the bottom and then draw upwards. So that draws the extensions down if I start on the bottom. So I use, for my Fibonacci extensions, I use the 236, the 382, the 50, the 618, 786, the 100. Um, 127, 14, 140, which is a institutional FIB level, 1618, 200, 2618, 300, 3618, and a 4236. Those are the, the levels that I follow. Um, the, then I, then I'll, I'll draw on the 15, then I'll go back down to whatever time frame I'm on to, to look and see if there's, you know, there's a, some meaning to it. And you'll notice, look, it bounced several times off of the 100, okay? It bounced off the, the, um, the morning, the 100 is the, the low of the first 15 minutes. See that? It bounced off of it twice. It bounced up and hit the 618 right here got within a few pennies and then so if you were looking to short microsoft guess where you shorted it you shorted the break of the hundred because we tested it twice and it bounced and once we broke it we we knew that there was a high probability it was going to continue much lower break a big break of a big fib level But I draw, uh, that's how I draw my fibs. Um, or, or I can draw it the opposite direction. And not that I really need to on this stock, but I could have gone, whoops, that's the wrong thing. If, if the price action was moving higher, I would have drawn it this way. So then I would have known where it was going, but obviously it didn't, so I didn't. But that's a, I, that's how I mean, we've been using first 15 minute for several years. Actually, thank you to our friend Pippin, who, who's here with us. Pippin is the one that uh, I believe is the one that brought that to our attention, was a good level to follow. I believe that was from you, Pippin, right? That was your recommendation. Uh, can you evaluate cost for Pat? Uh, Uh, and real quick, um, Sean wants to know the ATR for Microsoft. So without going to the daily chart, what I do is I just put a three, uh, on, on this chart, I put a 390 minute in because that's how many minutes are in a trading day. And you'll see I have ATR down here. So the ATR in Microsoft is $1.30 right here. That's that number down on the bottom. 390 is one day, basically. That was off on another window, but, um, or if I had my daily chart open, I have it on there. Pippin says you are correct. Yeah, we, we love that first 15 minute Pippin. Okay, so going back to, to Pat wanting me to evaluate cost, which is Costco. Uh, 
Um, let me start with the overall trend, going to the historical chart. And let's start with the monthly. So again, great uptrend, multi-year uptrend on the monthly. Great uptrend on the week, a little overextended, might be consolidating right here. You can see that there's a little weakness in the chart. Okay. It, notice, you know, the runs pull back after an, a, after an extended run that tends to pull back. And even the daily chart, a little exhausted. This thing's been going up since the beginning of the year. And it looks a little toppy. So overall, cost has a great trend to it. Overall, it has a great trend to it, um, but it may be slowing down. All that means is if you've been in it long for a time, protect your profits. That's all. Okay, protect your profits. Uh, intraday, you know, it, it did pull back this morning, it looks like, and it's been trading sideways most of the morning, most of the day. So I don't see a lot of movement today. It looks like it gapped and gapped down a little bit and just went range bound. Um, Joe says, where do you put the information so the fib lines show up on a screen as defaults? So there's two things you have to do. First of all, uh, you have to go to your settings and go to Fibonacci values and you need to add in these custom Fibonacci levels, okay? That's a 2618, a 300, a 3618, and a 4236. You'll have to add that because they they only go up to the 200 on uh, the Medved platform. On the default Fibonacci levels, then you, you'll you'll add in these these four levels: two six one eight, three hundred three six one eight, four two three six. Once you've done that, and let me go back to a fifteen minute chart, okay? So, and you've selected draw, and you've selected Fibonacci retracement, and you draw your first fifteen. Now, initially, all you're going to see is a line, and I don't, I'm not real fond of this, but you basically see that, that yellow line, okay? So what you have to do is click, right click on the line, okay? Put your mouse over the line till you get the little hand, right click, wait. Right click till you get this window, the parameters. Make sure you click extend right, show line percentage, show line values. It should default this. And, I need to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get with them. Okay, hold on. And then make sure you have all the correct Fibonacci levels checked. 0, 236, 382, 50%, 618, 786, Now, if you use any other Fib values, that's up to you, but that's the ones that we utilize. And then set it as your default. Make sure you set that as your default, okay? And then click OK. Once you've done that, then every time that you go back to it, that'll all be there. You won't ever have to do that again. But they they should um, they should default extend right show line percent and show line value but they, for whatever reason, it doesn't. Look where we went long on UNH, Fibs baby. Right off the 2618, that's a big value, the 2618. That's a very big level. Yeah, that was a great spot to get long UNH. Right right at it. 
and you had a you had a three minute and 13 18. Look at that, you had two up arrows on the one minute, you had a three minute up arrow right off of that fib. That was a great spot. And then look where it just reversed. Aha, volume weighted average price is where it, so it went above the 200, went to VWAP and then came back down. Have you started using VWAP, Pippin? I highly recommend it on the three minute. It gave you a great target. We use VWAP for a long time. Cool. Yep, it's it's a good indicator. All right, the, I'm just about out of time. Any other questions, guys? A good crowd today. Any other questions? So again, just to remind you, this session is twice weekly, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 3 o'clock Eastern. If you have any specific questions for me, kip at equity-alerts.com. My phone number is 972-841-8886. You're welcome to call or text me if you have questions. Um, if you're interested and if you don't currently subscribe to Clear Lines, you can go to equity-alerts.com, um, click on the Clear Lines tab, got some uh, information there and where you can subscribe. Um, the cost of Clear Lines is $59 a month plus uh, uh, $19.99 a month to MedVed if you do not have an Ally Invest account, if you have a funded account with Ally Invest, then um, uh, they waive that $19.99 monthly fee to MedVet. Still have to pay the $59 a month for, for my service, but that saves you the MedVed platform fee. If you don't have an account with one of the uh, integrated brokers, you may also, uh, have additional data feed charges. So um, if you have questions, feel free to email me. And again, these uh, sessions are recorded. They will be posted to the YouTube page. You can get to that at equity-alerts.com. And uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a great afternoon. I will see you guys uh, later. Bye-bye.